Okay. <clears throat> All right, so if you remember, hey, Dan, if you, Dan, if you remember, uh, I had asked you when they first started this chapter, I said, you know, some chapters I could see you wouldn't have to read them. And I said, you don't have to read this one. I just felt like this chapter, if you did read it, it would help you out a little bit. Now, if you haven't read it, um, you still might be in, in good shape. Let me see if I can get to it now. All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead, and uh, these are called the leftovers, all right? This is uh, everything that's really important has been taught already. And this is these are kind of the leftover things that if you haven't read the chapter, you would have missed it if you haven't read it. Okay, now, um, can you, um, let's see. I don't want all of them off. How about just the front bank here? Um, yeah, Natalie can do it. No, no. All right. Hey, take a look at this page here. Uh, we actually did a little bit of this in Chapter 3 or something like that. And so here, here let's talk about this. What is the solution? That, that's the basic idea. What is the solution? Isn't it something that's something's dissolved in something else? Is that right? Is that right? Okay, so... What kind of things can dissolve in what kind of things? You guys gotta be quiet. Shh, shh, shh. What kind of things could be in, dissolved in something else? Can you have a, a solid? Can it be dissolved in a liquid? Yes. Well, I like salt and water. Yeah. Okay. What else could be? What's another way to make a solution? Sugar and water. That's a that's a solid and a liquid. Yeah. That's that's the example I just gave. You can make a uh, oh pepper and water. You can make a heterogeneous. No, a heterogeneous mixture is not a solution. Gas and water, carbonated. Yes, so air. any kind of carbonated drink yep. is a gas that's actually dissolved in a liquid. And even though most materials increase their solubility as you heat the liquid, not gases. If you have a gas in something and you heat it, it drives, it actually drives the gas out. It's actually less soluble. So the best way to keep carbonated drinks, you keep them under pressure and you also keep them cool. The cooler they are and the more pressure they're on, the more carbonation stays in there. Now, what about another one? Um, could you have a liquid in a liquid? Could a liquid dissolve in a liquid? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and we, we use the idea of a 20% a alcohol solution. Didn't it have 20% alcohol, 80% water? Okay, and then the one that you probably wouldn't have thought about would be a solid dissolved in a solid. Now, we mentioned this in the third uh, chapter three, but you probably forgot it. Um, there's a little trick there. I can dissolve a solid in a solid, but I have to melt them first. And so you can melt things like um, you could have copper and uh, zinc, melt them together, and then let it, let it cool off, and you have a thing. What do you call it when a solid dissolves in a solid? It's, it's a brand new metal. Alloy. An alloy, very good. Okay. So alloys are actually solutions they're solid solid solutions yes i said that's a trick i said but when you uh if you, you have to let them melt and that's how you mix them and then once you mix them let them cool off then you have a solid dissolved in a solid steel is probably the most common one steel is mostly iron but it's iron alloyed with something else it could be carbon steel nickel steel titanium steel uh, there are many many kinds of steel like that Okay, so you okay on that? Some leftovers, all right? Let's go to the next page. I spent almost a day and a half on this page in, an, in the chapter. Oh if you, if you, I'm not gonna reteach it. I'm not reteaching it, so wait. You can't be quiet, I'm heavy leave, right? I'm not reteaching this because I spent almost a day and a half when we were doing the chapter called um, reactions in, a, in an aqueous solution i came back here and i gave the whole story why is water so good at dissolving things and let's see how much you remember okay do you remember that water is has uh, covalent bonds but they don't share equally and therefore oxygen's a big pig he draws the oxygen to uh, the electrons toward them so the oxygen in is slightly negative and the water in is slightly positive remember that word polar it's a polar molecule okay so when water is next to other water, it's attracted to water. So that's it's called hydrogen bonding. And so that, that, that was the whole story about water attracting water. But why does water um, do a pretty good job 
in dissolving ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are made of plus and minus ions. Well, water has a plus and minus nature too, doesn't it? And so we, we went through that whole story. I'm not gonna do the whole thing again. Okay, if you forget it, I'm, I'm sorry. But here's that whole sto here's that story. Now, alcohols are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, but there's always an O and an H. So that, that sets up that same situation where they don't share equally. And so one part of an alcohol molecule is slightly positive, one is slightly negative, and that's why alcohols dissolve in water. Polar, polar, polar dissolves polar. Anyway, so that's why water is called the universal solvent. It dissolves a whole lot of things. Okay, so we move on now. Uh, now, if you look through the chapter, uh, this is the uh, finding uh, percent by mass. Do you remember that? Percent by mass. We did some of those problems, right? Okay, they have some more if you want to look at some more. The next page talks about, there's some more, it says uh, molarity. Your book doesn't even have percent by volume. I did that. It's the same idea. And then they have uh, molarity, and they know molarity is going to spend a lot of time on molarity. They have several things in molarity. There's that ion thing. Uh, what's the molarity of that ion? What's the molarity of that ion? And then here's some, um, here's some leftover. Look at this page here. Um, it's, I see a dark print word there. It says a standard solution. So I, I would ask that on the test Tuesday. He said, but, 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 but you didn't say that in class. Well, I asked you to read the chapter. But I'm, I'm helping anyway. I'm helping. I'm going over the leftovers anyway. What is a standard solution? Okay, let's try it. What if you carefully measured the solute, and then you carefully put that water up to the line, you would know the number of grams. So therefore, you'd know the number of moles. You'd know the the amount of um, you know the molarity of this. Would you would know the molarity of that solution because you made it? Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. What would you call a solution that you know what it is? You know its concentration because you made it. Standard solution. They call it a standard solution, also known as a known. So if you stay in science and you hear it's a known solution, what does that mean? You made it. Uh, somebody made it, or at least they told me. I, either I made it or I bought it, and I know the concentration. You get that? And that's called a known or a standard solution. Nope. If you don't know it, sure. what is it? All right, if you don't know it, now here's what happened in my advanced chemistry class. Ready? What they did is a thing uh, called a titration. And a titration is where you take, uh, here's what they had to do. I gave them a, an acid, and I did not tell them how concentrated it was. And that they did is they made a base, but they knew the concentration of that because they made it. They made a 1.00 molar NaOH solution. And then what they did is they took the known, the standard solution, and reacted it with the unknown. And remember that MAVA equals M, okay? They use that math, and you know what? They found out the concentration of the unknown. So that's what a titration is, finding an unknown by reacting it with a known. Anyway, it's kind of neat. They do it all the time in science. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, <clears throat> Here, uh, the next part, uh, part of the chapter is about the dilution equation. I think some of you have that down pretty well. And then they also have, um, uh, I'll skip that one, uh, neutralization. We did, we'll do, you know, we, we did that. And we are not going to be doing section 15A. So if you were to read a book, don't even worry about normality. I'm not even going to bring that up, okay? Now, uh, the one part, though, that I do want to show you is this right here. And you would think that this is very complicated, but no, you guys have been, you start with the mole concept, then you went with stoichiometry. Now it's called solution stoichiometry. Watch, watch how, how well you easily fall into this high level skill. I'm gonna show you a high level skill in chemistry. You're gonna fall into it very easy. All right, here we go. Um, there's a problem right here, and I want you to try to solve it for me. Let me, let me magnify this, all right? Because some of you don't have your books with you. Now, when I read this, here's what's going to happen. When I first read it, you're going to say, Whoosh. that went right over my head. No, you're going to be okay. Okay? All right, here it goes. Calculate the mass of solid uh, NaCl that must be added to 1.5 liters of a 0.1 molar silver nitrate solution to precipitate all the silver ions in the form of silver chloride. Calculate the mass 
of the silver chloride formed. Now, what do you think? Just like that? Yep. Or, or maybe a little bit? I'm done. I got it. Okay. I Okay, right? So just trust me, okay? Can you trust me? Uh, I trust you. Okay, here we go. If you trust me, let's do it. First of all, I'd like you to write out the, the equation. Let's write out the equation, all right? What's reacting with rock? So we'll start with that. Get your pencil out, get a paper out, and let's see how well, how far you get on this. Now, again, it looks like this is a very difficult question. You, once you start putting it together, you'll say, I know what to, I think I know what to do here. All right, um, what's going to react with what? I can't. 1.5. You're going to add NaCl yeah. to a solution of what? AgNO. Okay, Wait, so Na, NaCl is going to be added to what? Oh, it's magnified. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, I, I know. Here's what I'll do. All right, here we go. I keep, I'm gonna have to do, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can do that. Okay, there you go. NaCl plus what? What kind of reaction do you think this might be? Oh, the no replacement. Okay, so let's write, what are you gonna write over here? Uh, sodium nitrate. And how do you write sodium nitrate? Uh, sodium is uh, plus one nitrate minus one. Okay, so that's good. And what's the other product? Mm. And how do you write silver chloride? No, they're, they're the same. Silver is plus one, chlorine is minus one. So the only thing I don't like about this example the author used is that I don't have to add any coefficients. I could have made it a little more difficult with coefficients, but that's all right. Is everybody okay? Yeah. So what you thought was kind of difficult, at least we have a good start, don't we? Now, what kind of information did they give me? They want me to find the mass of NaCl. They want me to find that. And then the last part of the question says, calculate the mass of silver chloride made. Now, by the way, <clears throat> silver chloride is the most, one of the most famous white precipitates in all of chemistry. So I know that this is a, not only a double replacement, but it's a precipitation reaction, isn't it? And what about this? What do we write after this one? Oh, aqueous. And because all sodium salts and all nitrates are soluble, matter of fact, this would have been aqueous here. And here, they acted like how many grams of solid? So I'm gonna put an S there for that. All right, are you okay so far? Uh, no. I mean, is this scary? Is this, yeah. I mean, what's scary about like this? A equation, you didn't even have to put coefficients to balance? That's not scary. Is it scary to know that that was the precipitate? No, we did that. Okay, so now there's some more information we haven't put down yet. It says here 1.5 liters of 0.1 molar H. Okay, so 1.5 liters and it's 0 0.1, 0.1 molar is the concentration. Well, now what do we do? And this is the only thing that's new. And it's not even that new. Watch what happens. Anytime I see in a problem, this is going to help you on the test too. If I ever see a problem, they give me the molarity and they give me the volume in liters. What's molarity times volume in liters? Moles of solute. I'm going to get in the mole world just like that. Let's do it. What's all right, molarity times volume in liters <coughs> equals moles of solute. Okay, here we go. What's this times this? 1.5 liters. All right, sorry. 1.5 liters times the molarity is point, point 0.1 molar. Molarity times volumes in liter. Big M means moles per liter times liters. No wonder it gives you moles of solute. In this case, it's going to be moles of AG. NO3. So 
So how many moles of AgNO3 did I give you? Uh, what, what do you get when you multiply these? 0.15. That That's right. <laughs> I was just going off this one. All right, so now watch what I do here. Watch. 0.15 moles. And you say, wait a minute. Wait, we're in the mole world. We're in the mole world. So now watch what happens. Watch. You want to know that number there? Matchy, matchy. And then how do you come up out of the mole world? Say, what is the molar mass of NaCl? Okay, how much? 23 plus 35.5, 58.5. So get your calculators out. Everybody should have a calculator out. What's point? What's 0.15 times 58.5? 8.775. So what looked like a problem that you, you said, I'm not sure about that one. It's kind of a scary looking problem. As we set it up, all if I remember that molarity times volume is moles. Once I get in the mole world, then my stoichiometry skills just kind of take over. Okay, let's go over here now. And they also wanted this, so I'm going to slide way over here and... Like I said, the easy part of this is they, uh, there are no, all the coefficients are one, so this is a matchy matchy. And now, how do I find how many grams of AgCl now? So what's the molar mass of AgCl? Okay, take a look at, uh, I'm sorry, AgCl. Uh, silver is about 108, 108, and chlorine is 35.5, 143.5. So let's take this number times 143.5. And what do you have here? 21.5. Okay, 21.5. Did everybody get in that or not? Did everybody get in that? Okay, now I'm going to check the author and see what they got. Um, and I'm, I'm a magnification here, so I've got to be careful about that. The final answer for AGCL is 21.5. Okay? So how do we know? And NACL was 8.76. So what looked like, what, when you first read that problem, you said, I, I don't remember a problem like that before. But all we had to remember in this chapter was molarity times volume in liters gets me into the mole world. And then everything else kind of takes over. Yes? How do we know when to, like, write up the equation and stuff? Um... As opposed to what? How are we going to do this without it? See, the problem is, if this equation, what if it had like a coefficient here? I'd have to be careful of that, wouldn't I? What if there was a 2 here? When I go over here, it then. So I do have to write out the balanced equation there. So we're going to do one more. We're going to do one more, and you're going to sit with somebody, and I'm going to give you five minutes to work it out, and you're going to say, I can't believe I just did that problem. And, and you're going to say, I'm very proud of myself. So here we are on this page, not this page. Uh, all right, now, I'll give you a hint. I will give you a hint. Ready? I'm going to read it to you, and you're going to say, Whoosh. that's over my head. It's not. When aqueous solutions of sodium sulfate and lead 2 nitrate are mixed, lead 2 sulfate precipitates. Calculate the mass of lead 2 sulfate formed when 1.25 liters of 0.05 molar lead 2 nitrate and two liters of 0.025 molar sodium sulfate are mixed. Oh my gosh. Now, no, wait, wait. I'm going to give you a hint. If they, if they give me molarity and volume, what's molarity times volumes in liters? Moles of solute. Okay, now wait. you got to listen. So I know they've already given me the moles of one of those chemicals, haven't they? Did they give me the moles of the other one? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Because they gave me molarity and volume again. But wait, wait. What happens when you have a problem where they give you either the grams of both reactants or the moles of both reactants? Limiting reactant. All right, go sit with somebody. Go sit with somebody, and I'll give you five minutes. Let's see who can do it, all right? Let's do it. No way we're going to limiting reactant again. Yes, yes. Yes. We're doing this one right here. It's right there, okay? All right, you do it. I'm going to do it. Hey, right, you do it. I'll do it. Mr. Feeney, that's not two people. It can be three. Yeah. 
Well, that's four. Freddie, just get in the group with that. Just get in, get in here. Be, be nice, and Fiona might let you. Now, what you do, you start. Hey, tell everybody, how do we start it? You're going to be very proud of yourself when you get done with this one. You know why? Because I know molarity times volume in liters is moles. They're giving me the moles of both. And they give you grams of both or moles of both. i got to have two rows of boxes. All right, let's do it. Hey, hey, everybody stop. Um, I know you can do this. I wouldn't even ask you to do it if I didn't think so. But you, if you stay there and say, what am I going to do first? What am I going to do next? No, you have, there's a coefficient. You have to add a coefficient. Okay, now it's start out as lead two, so it's going to end up as lead two. So. Well, no, there is one coefficient you have to add. Well, try it. What do you think? Kim, stop talking about me. Oh, I know Freddie was like, Freddie was like. Nobody's talking about you. <laughs> We're talking about the Hey, can you guys, uh, we don't, I'm not, wait, I don't want you taking forever. I said five minutes, so you really don't have time to do anything else except let's write the equation down, let's get it balanced, and let's see how fast you can get into the mole world. What you're doing is you keep reading it and you don't write anything down. And so you're not getting anywhere. You're spinning, you're spinning your wheels. Other people are almost done and you haven't even write, written the balance equation yet. I've written, I've written the balance equation. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
What? Yeah. See, by now, you have the balanced equation. You put all your numbers where they belong, and then you don't have to look at this anymore. Uh, are you going to guess? Well, then ask her, how do you know? How do you know which one's limiting? I'm going to give you one more minute. One more minute. Okay, then I'm going to show you how to do it. One more minute. Okay. The group should help you understand how to do this. Are you getting close? We won't have limiting reactions on the final event, will we? Yes. Yeah. Did no. you have it last? No, no, no. Last the last test we took had it, didn't we? Oh, I thought you said we'll opt that one out because I don't, we're not going to be doing limited tests exam. On the exam, yes. Are we going to? Are we going to have a final exam? No. We're going to not do a final exam. We're actually just going to do a bunch of extra credit projects. Actually, yeah. Uh, uh, well, that's what I was planning. All right. But everybody stop. Uh, Zach, I'm going to ask you to sit down, okay? Everybody stop. Stop what you're doing. Everybody stop. Shh, shh, shh. Everybody stop what you're doing. Okay. When you first read this problem, it seemed like very difficult. It's very, it looked very high level. But here's what we do. Let's pretend. First thing I want to do is lay out some kind of framework so I have the balanced equation. Now, take a look. Did you write your formulas correct? If you did, you would have had to put a two, a two coefficient right there. Did everybody do that? Everybody got that? Okay, now, the only thing that's new in this chapter, the only thing that's new is what is molarity times volume in liters? Okay, so if you take a look at this, then molarity times volume in liters gives me moles of solute. So let's take a look. What's two... Uh, what's 0.025, that's the molarity, times 2 liters? That gives you 0.05 moles. Now, what's right here? So I'm going to put that underneath there, 0.05 moles. Now, that was pretty easy. But now, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to multiply molarity times volume here, but I'm not going to put it here. I don't put it here, I put it in the second row. And if you did that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the one I already did. Um, when I multiplied molarity times volume on that one, I got 0 0.0625. Okay, now, ready? Hey, okay, everybody listen, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Okay, now I need to fill that box in, then I can tell you who the limiting reaction is. Well, the good news, they're all matchy-matchies here. Okay, now watch. I have that much peanut butter. I would need this much bread to use up all the peanut butter. Oh, I got your bread. I got, I got, I got more bread than you need. I got more bread than you need. So wait, 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 wait. So there's no way I could be the limiting reactant. I have more bread than you're going to use. You, you are the limiting reactant. So that's the row of boxes I go with. This is another matchy-matchy. Now the molar mass, the molar mass of PBSO4 is about 303. And how do you come up out of the mole world? Okay, so I got 15.15. And if we round to three sig figs, 15.2. And the author says the answer is 15.2 grams. You should feel you should feel pretty good about that because when you first read that, you thought, I can't do that. But you can. You have the skills. 
Okay, you have the skills. Okay, next. That was just, that was just, I have a question. Yeah. If I come to school tomorrow, I show you a magic trick that, that uh, blows your mind away. Yeah. Well, I yeah. Uh, well, I'm afraid that's a, that might have one for you. Nah, no, no, it's legit. sure I go over the answers and then what I'll do is if you think I made a mistake grade it I'll look at that all right all right let's go here okay I'm gonna ask um I'll go ahead and stop here